Hey, girlies. Robert receives a peculiar offer from a multi-billionaire. Could he navigate womanhood to realise his dreams? In Jue, Robert sat down at the bar overlooking the beautiful beach. He gestured at the bartender to bring him a cold can of beer. The sun was melting into a gorgeous orange-yellow colour as it set further. The repetitive bass line coming from the beach party down below was almost annoying him, but he was too distracted by the women dancing in their bikinis. This was the life he had wanted to live. Ever since college, his goal in life had been to become a millionaire before he was 35 and cruise into an early retirement. Three months in Mallorca, three months in some Caribbean island, maybe six months in Thailand. He had heard that Thailand had beautiful beaches. As he gazed at the crowd of beautiful women dancing on the beach, he was analysing each person one by one, their builds, their bikinis, and Robert was building a different fantasy for each one of them. Where would they go for their exuberant vacations? What kind of expensive clothes would he buy for her? These were all utopian fantasies, of course. Robert's life had not been as easy as he had hoped as a youthful college graduate. He had thought that he would have a meteoric rise in sales, that he would quickly rise up in rank, racking up promotions and bonuses. His career had not gone the way he had hoped, unfortunately. After he graduated from university at 24, he found a job with relative ease. However, he had been stuck as a low-level sales employee for the past seven years. His sales skills had not been stellar. He was not appreciated by his higher-ups. Consequently, he had not received the promotions and bonuses that he had hoped for. On top of all of this, he was stuck with a huge amount of student debt. Thus, not only was he not able to build up his savings and investments, Robert's net worth was in the negative. This was the first time in years where he was able to go on a real vacation. Usually after all of his expenditure and paying the minimum required amount for his student debt, he would not have any money to spend on anything else. That night, after taking a shower, Robert decided to pay a visit to the hotel's casino. His life had not had the fortune he had hoped for, but who knew maybe he would hit a jackpot. Robert strolled into the lavish casino of the hotel, his steps echoing softly against the marble floors. The air was thick with the scent of money and possibility, and he couldn't help but feel a flicker of excitement ignite within him. He made his way to the roulette table, the sound of the spinning wheel and the clinking of chips filling his ears. With a determined expression, he exchanged some of his hard-earned cash for chips and took a seat at the table. For hours he played, his heart racing with each spin of the wheel, but luck seemed to be eluding him as his chips slowly dwindled away with each round. As the night wore on, Robert found himself growing increasingly desperate. He had pinned all his hopes on this one gamble, this one chance to turn his fortunes around, but it seemed that fate had other plans for him. The desperation and drunkenness had enveloped him so much that Robert had not paid attention to the other people at the table. As he was getting ready to leave the table and close the night, he glanced at the people around him. There was an older couple who were having the time of their lives. There was a middle-aged man sitting with a gorgeous young woman. The man was wearing an expensive suit and had been smoking a cigar. The woman looked to be much younger than him, and she was wearing a black sequin mini-dress. She had expensive jewellery all over her, and they too were having a great time. The man, however had taken notice of Robert and was smiling at him. Unlucky night, huh? He yelled across the table. Don't be so gloomy, young sport, he continued. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The important thing is to know when to leave. Yeah, you could say that, Robert replied with a half-hearted smile, trying to mask his inner turmoil. Guess it's just not my night, the man chuckled taking a puff of his cigar before speaking again. Ah, but every night has its silver lining, my friend. Perhaps your luck is just waiting for the right moment to reveal itself. Robert raised an eyebrow, intrigued by the man's cryptic words. And what makes you so sure of that? The man leaned back in his chair, his eyes twinkling with amusement. Call it intuition, my boy. 
I've been around the block enough times to know when someone's got potential. Robert studied the man for a moment, his curiosity piqued by the mysterious aura that seemed to surround him. Who was this stranger, and what did he want? Before he could voice his thoughts, the man extended a hand across the table. The name's Vincent, by the way. Vincent Marchetti. Robert hesitated for a moment before accepting the handshake. Robert, he replied, a note of caution in his voice. Tell you what, Robert, man exclaimed confidently, you seem too gloomy to be gambling. I'll cover your losses for today, he continued. He pushed a small portion of his chips towards Robert. Robert was confused. Why would you do that, he asked. Well, Robert, I believe in making friends and philanthropy, replied Vincent. I am serious, he continued. I have made enough tonight anyway. Robert was too tired and hammered to question his fortune. He thanked the man kindly, shook his hand, and headed to his room. When he woke up the next morning with a headache, he noticed a note that was slid under the door. The note had a room number and was written on an expensive handkerchief with a monogram that spelt the initials of Vincent Marchetti. This had made Robert curious, as the note did not have any explanation or time written on it. Given that a room number was provided, Mr Marchetti definitely wanted to see him again. It was the least he could do after the favour he was granted yesterday night. However, before he left his room, Robert decided that it would be best to do some research about this gentleman that had invited Robert to his room. The Wikipedia page on Vincent Marchetti said that he was a crypto-billionaire playboy that rose to fame with his crypto casino. He was worth an alleged $10 billion. This was an amount of money Robert could not imagine having even in his greatest dreams. Even when he was younger he had hoped for a couple million at most, just enough for a comfortable retirement. Robert decided not to make his patron wait any longer so he put on some decent clothes and headed to Mr Marchetti's room at the top floor of the hotel. As you would expect from a playboy billionaire, Mr Marchetti was staying in the presidential suite, a room that cost over $15,000 a night. Robert knocked on the door of the suite. To his surprise, it was Mr Marchetti who answered the door. He had half expected a butler to open the door. Hello, Mr Marchetti, said Robert. Hello, Robert, replied Vincent. Please come in and call me Vincent. Vincent gestured for him to take a seat on one of the plush leather sofas, pouring two glasses of expensive-looking whiskey from a crystal decanter. Please, make yourself comfortable, Vincent said with a charming smile, handing Robert a glass. Vincent leaned back in his chair, his gaze intense as he studied Robert. I'll get straight to the point, Robert. It seems to me that you have some unfulfilled dreams, goals that you never achieved. Your time to find the success you're looking for is ticking, my friend. Robert did not know what to say. It was all true, of course. This man had read him like a book. He did not have to say anything. It seems like Vincent already knew what was inside Robert. Robert's silence had already told Vincent the truth. I am going to cut straight to the chase, continued Vincent. I have an offer for you. A strange offer, but a once-in-a-lifetime shot at achieving everything you have dreamed of, and more. Vincent was pointing to a folder on the table with his eyes. Robert picked up the folder and started reading through the conditions. To anybody else, this would have been a preposterous deal. Vincent was asking Robert to change genders and become his trophy wife. Robert would have been ready to run out of that room, had he not read Vincent's side of the deal. In exchange for Robert becoming a woman, he would be paid a million dollars for every month they lived together, and he would be paid 250000 monthly for the rest of his life if they break up. Reading the deal again and again, Robert could only muster a single question. Is this for real? Yes, my friend replied Vincent. All of the transition costs are covered, of course and I have the greatest medical team that specialises in gender transitions. Have no doubt that they can and will turn you into a drop-dead gorgeous woman. Given Vincent's reach, Robert could certainly believe that. 
but he had a final question. Why, he asked. You could date any woman you want with the kind of resources you have access to. Why would you want to date a trans woman? That is a good question, replied Vincent. When you become as successful as me, life becomes your playground. As you just mentioned, there isn't much I can't do. There aren't many people I can't reach if I wanted to. However, I love seeing how far other people are willing to go to realise their dreams. Are you willing to sacrifice your name, your manhood, to realise your dreams? He couldn't deny the allure of the offer. A million dollars a month, a lifetime of financial security, all in exchange for a simple transformation. It was a price that many would consider unthinkable, but to Robert, it seemed like the opportunity of a lifetime. I'll do it, he said finally, his voice steady despite the tremor in his heart. I'll take the leap. Vincent's smile widened, a look of triumph gleaming in his eyes. Excellent choice, my friend. I assure you, you won't regret it. Vincent handed Robert a bag. The bag had medicine and a new phone in it. The medicine is your hormone patch. Put one on right now. Your doctor is going to contact you to discuss the full regimen. The phone has the contact information of everyone you need to know. Throw away your old one after you quit your job. The next six months of the year flew like an arrow. Robert was first moved to a compound. This was not where Vincent resided. Robert was told they would start living together once he was fully transitioned. He had a team of medical doctors constantly monitoring him at the compound. As outlined by the agreement, Vincent was allowed to give a new name to Robert, and the name he had chosen was Brandy. One of Vincent's assistants at the compound, responsible for Brandy's mental transition, had told Brandy that Vincent liked to name his girls after his favourite drinks. It was difficult to get used to, but Vincent assistants had only been using that name. There was an entire team of women in the house who were dedicated to making him feel like a woman, and after the first couple of weeks, it became harder and harder to convince himself that he was a man. The concentrated hormones he was being given had made him grow breasts. His chest was constantly sensitive and scratching against the clothes made him hyper-aware of them at every step he took. He was given laser hair removal for every part of his body. He was smooth like a baby and did not have to shave. He was also not allowed to wear any masculine clothes. He was only allowed to wear dresses, skirts, bras, panties. The team had been giving him classes on feminine etiquette, cooking, cleaning and bedside manners. After the second month, in his own mind, he was not Robert anymore. She was Brandy. Whatever psychological techniques the team were using were extremely effective. By the end of the fourth month, Brandy's doctors told her she was ready for surgery. As outlined in the agreement, Vincent did not want a shred of masculinity left in Brandy's body. Brandy could not remember the week of the surgeries too well because she was under constant anaesthesia. It took her until the end of fifth month to recover. She was given bottom surgery, breast augmentation, facial feminization, fillers on every part of her body and voice feminization surgery within two weeks. It was no surprise that it took her a while to recover, but the results were unquestionable. No one could have guessed that Brandy had ever lived a day as a man. Her perfect puffy lips, curvy feminine figure, her perky bust. She looked at herself in the mirror and appreciated her form with her hands and with her eyes. Her wardrobe fitted her perfectly now. She filled every bra, her panties and bikini bottoms had no bulges. Her voice was high and smooth like her skin. It was almost like her voice was changed to match her new personality. Over her training, she was taught to be bubbly and cheery. Every dress that was chosen for her looked gorgeous on her. Over the months she was given training, she had grown to love the ritual of femininity. She loved waking up and putting on makeup. She loved styling her outfits and posing for the progress photos that was taken for Vincent. At the end of the sixth month, she was told she was ready for Vincent. She was so excited. This was what she was waiting for. Brandy was finally ready to meet the man that had paid for all of this. As she walked towards the red coupe that awaited her at the front gates, 
The clicks of her high heels and her heartbeat seemed to synchronise. Her heart was pounding. She could not wait to meet Vincent again. She was so happy that it was Vincent who came to pick her up, and not someone else. She could see that Vincent was appreciating her as she walked towards the car. She felt seen and appreciated like a work of art. When she sat in the car, Vincent said, You look beautiful, my dear love, and gave Brandy a passionate kiss. He then handed her a plane ticket and said, I thought you deserved a honeymoon after going through that metamorphosis. Brandy looked at the plane ticket and realised that it was to the same place they had met six months ago. Brandy felt so happy, and a warm smile started growing on her face. As the red sports car accelerated, she could feel the forces of the car on her chest. She then thought about how her beautiful red mini dress matched the colour of the car. Vincent was truly living the life. He had the red sports car and the gorgeous woman to match the car. They entered the airport through a special entry for private planes. The shallow steps of the stairs leading up to the plane were a challenge, so Vincent held Brandy's hand gracefully and helped her climb the stairs. Once they landed, they headed straight for the hotel. Brandy was staying in one of the smallest rooms last time she was here. This time she would be staying with Vincent in the King's Suite. After she unpacked her luggage and helped put both her clothes and Vincent's clothes in the closet. As she was taking them out of their luggages, she appreciated Vincent's style. He was a man that loved a good suit, and the suits loved him too. They accentuated his masculine build. Brandy realised that for the first time she felt attracted to a man. She caught herself daydreaming about Vincent's chiselled jawline. She loved his beard and his veiny arms. She felt like a beautiful flower standing next to him. Vincent was appreciating Brandy's graceful movements and her perfect body as she put everything in the closet. Once she was done, he asked, Would you like to head to the beach party, my dear? Yes, replied Brandy in a high-pitched feminine voice. She still could not believe how naturally feminine she had become. She decided to wear a beautiful white micro-bikini as she knew Vincent wanted to parade her around just as much as he wanted to appreciate her. Once at the beach, Brandy headed for the bar and asked for a cosmopolitan. It was the same bartender from all those months ago. Brandy searched his eyes to see if he would recognise her. The man didn't seem to recognise her. Once she got her cocktail, she headed for the party. Vincent was at the bar appreciating her graceful, feminine movements her curvy figure. Just six months ago, she was in his place, appreciating the beautiful girls on the same beach. She could feel not only Vincent's eyes, but also every other man's eyes on her. Vincent had kept his promise. She was the most beautiful girl on that beach. Brandy was so in tune with her feminine self that the dreams of her yester self did not even concern her. She just wanted to dance and be looked at. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow us on other social media. Enjoy your girly day.